December 27th, 10 a.m. Just a court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? <coughs> Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Er, very well, no opening statement, so. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. R right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Order. Ms. Ron Kawa, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It'll be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right, right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. Is that mysterious boat shop owner? Or the bird? Oh, I thought it was gonna be the bird. That'd be funnier. Witness, state your profession. I, er, I am the proprietor of the restaurant at the Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And er, I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Er, uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Objection. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Reitbach. I predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. <laughs> well, er, I'm not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? My, er, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm. He can't recall, you say. Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness. Tis, tis, I hate that guy. The night of the murder. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Uh, yep. I was in the restaurant, where I rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang. Uh, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. And I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin cross-examination. There's nothing to question in my witness's testimony. I go no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Er, yes, Mr. R Mr. Wright? What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Very well, you may begin. Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. I like to cross-examination. It was the midnight of the 24th, just after midnight. Uh, yep, I like to know everything. Just after midnight, you say? Uh, yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? D don't glare at me like that. I, er I remembered it clearly. I did. Uh, yep. You see? Continue. I was in the restaurant where I rent boats, as usual. Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Then I heard a bang. Uh, yep. And where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yep. Good. Continue. But it didn't. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. It's about then the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. 
By your window? Yeah, yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tsk, tsk. I have a bad feel about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. I know Von Karma. He spent time pre pre preparing the witness. I'm not going to find contradictions very easily in his testimony. Phew, it's tough being a lawyer. It was night of the 24th after midnight. I heard a bang. Oh, yep. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there. Yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yep. At the time, that is. At the time. Then I heard another bang. So you heard two gunshots total? Uh, yep. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. What do we have? 3 times People, I mean, I'm only hearing witnesses saying two. So then I had the 24th to midnight. I was in the restaurant where I rent boats, then I heard a bang. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. to think. It's, this is hard. I heard another bang. Are you sure? Uh oh. D Dad. <laughs> dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set up me up for a fall. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. 
Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I'd better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Objection! Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints off after he fired. You're ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this in this witness's testimony is true. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Objection! Your Honor, this witness claims that Edward said, I can't believe he's dead. But his words word is all we have. If we were telling if you were telling a lie. Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Or, Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's no- there's nothing I can do. I- uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Just tisk. Three minutes were perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need to more decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No. <laughs> this court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Oh dear. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be held pending trial in higher court with month for day's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Wait! Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? L Larry? What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I- I was- I was there in the park the night of the murder. I- I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it. I remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Ron Karma. So you say you heard the gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. A anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order. Oh, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us this fun once one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right there, right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. Oh, what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. December 27th, 10.28 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. <sighs> that was too close. Sorry to keep you up on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <clears throat> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to stay in there. Larry? Was at the... Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. All right. And he found the balloon at the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Huh? You say something, right? Yeah. A lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. Mm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh.
When he fell into the lake, I went into the daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Carmel has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly completed evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten-minute trial this time. We'll make this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everyone's on Larry now. Everything's on Larry now. Alright, let's do this. December 27th. 10.35 a.m. District Court, Court Number 3. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about it. this being our big break. The night I was out on the boat in the lake, I was looking for something and I er, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back into the rental shop dock. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, your honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Mm, well, we've come this far. There's no way to go back. Go... F ah, my ankle. Oh. You know when your ankle just needs to be popped and you just have to... Oh, that hurt. Okay. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. And not at the murder. That night I was out in the boat in the lake. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out in the boat. But that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something, and I found it. Looking for something? Er, right, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all relevant, let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the boat back into the rental dock. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for an hour. I guess it was around 12. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard a, this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't sh too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody's just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. <laughs> so after I heard the single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. That's a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradications. Sorry, I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. And I was out on the boat. Like... No, I didn't. Technically, it does show that he was, he was on the lake. That no one should have been on the lake. I was out in the boat in the lake. I was looking for something and I found it. What do we have?
Wait a sec, Larry. Okay, so that's correct. What? You only heard one bang. Are you sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta- you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts, what? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um, well, to tell the truth, I'm not sure. Eh, not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I uh, might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones? What? Order, order. And stop that booing. But Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Y yeah so what? That's a crime? I listen to my radio, everybody listens to the radio, what's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should you he continue the testimony? Uh, I don't know. He's stupid. And when he's stupid... Ugh. He's not helping us, though. No, I think I've heard enough. This is all too embarrassing. In fact, I think we've all heard enough. <coughs> what are you thinking, Nick? If it's not now, Mr. Etch will be found guilty. We have to turn this trial around now. Uh, Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. <laughs> Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts, please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. Oh, I bet you would. 